Welcome to the Salk Institute's Where Cures Begin podcast, where scientists talk about breakthrough discoveries with your hosts, Ali Akmal and Brittany Fair. The Salk Institute was founded in 1960 by Jonas Salk, a physician scientist who, in 1955, developed the first effective vaccine for polio, a highly contagious infection caused by a virus. He founded the Institute to be a place where scientists could conduct the kind of cutting-edge biological research that was key to his developing the polio vaccine. Today, the world is facing another frightening infection, the COVID-19 pandemic. So we sat down, remotely of course, with some of our faculty who study infectious diseases, as well as our chief science officer, for their perspectives on the current situation. Martin Hetzer is Salk's Vice President and Chief Science Officer. He is also a professor in Salk's Molecular and Cellular Biology Laboratory. Professor Hetzer, what are your thoughts about lessons we can take away from the COVID-19 pandemic? It reminds a lot of people on the, on the polio crisis in late you know, 40s and, and, and early 50s, uh, where we, like in the U.S., actually did have what's now referred to as social distancing, where people over the summer periods didn't go out, didn't allow their kids to play. And, and so it had a, a very similar feel. And, and I think it's really remarkable. There's a lot of uh, uh, many articles being written about this now, how similar and how different those, those um, uh, events were. And also the 1918 uh, uh, the flu epidemic is brought up a lot. But I think we're all... Uh, those reflections really, you know, focus on and 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 hone in on. It's really the importance of science. I mean, that's really uh, the one thing that uh, persists throughout the you know, decades and, and the centuries. That the only way to defeat uh, diseases like uh, COVID nineteen, polio, or and keep things like influenza in check is through science. Is to through understanding the underlying uh, principles of uh, infectious disease and and SOC does play an enormous role in in many areas that are relevant to infectious disease. Professor Greg Lemke has been at SOC for many years and in fact knew Jonas Salk well. Professor Lemke, can you talk a little bit about polio, the disease for which Jonas Salk developed the vaccine in the 1950s? The polio virus, which is the virus uh, that causes polio, it's the virus that Jonas dedicated many years of his life to, to combating is an ancient virus. It's been with humankind for thousands and thousands of years. But we really didn't experience serious polio epidemics until the beginning of the 20th century. The polio epidemics, they were seasonal. They would occur during the summer. They would wax and wane in the sense that some summers they'd be particularly bad. Some summers they weren't quite so bad. But in each successive bad summer, it got worse and worse. So by the time the salt polio vaccine came online in the mid-1950s, we had just experienced our very worst epidemic. So the very worst polio epidemic here in the United States was in 1952. That killed several thousand people, made many more thousands of people um, sick from the consequences of polio. Susan Keck is a professor in and the director of the Nomis Center for Immunobiology and Microbial Pathogenesis. It is a research center within the Salk Institute that focuses on how we maintain health and immunity. Nomis Center faculty study infectious disease, inflammation, the immune system, autoimmune disease, cancer, and more. Professor Keck, can you briefly describe how our immune system works? So our immune system uh, can be considered conceptually to be divided up in two major compartments. We have our innate immune system and we have our adaptive immune system. Our innate immune system essentially refers to cell types such as macrophages, which can engulf and eat up pathogens or microbes uh, in our bodies. Our adaptive immune system consists of our, our of lymphocytes, our white blood cells, such as T cells or B cells. And these cells are called adaptive because they adapt to the pathogen upon the entry of the pathogen. 
So the innate immune system is sort of like first responders who provide general first aid on the way to the hospital. Our adaptive immune system is like the specialists who show up later with more targeted treatments specific to the problem. But they can't administer these therapies until they've had time to really figure out what ails the patient. So our T cells exist and our B cells exist in a naive state originally before the, the pathogen enters the body. But once the pathogen enters and they start to recognize that pathogen, then they start to adapt and get activated and they expand in great numbers to, to fight that pathogen. And they have very specific receptors that can see those pathogens and, and try to target the infected cells. What we have been trying to understand is is how does immune memory form? And immune memory lies specifically within these adaptive immune cells, these memory T cells or these memory B cells that form after they've been exposed to and have responded to the pathogen. Professor Lemke's work also focuses on how the immune system is controlled so that it responds enough to a threat but doesn't overreact, as is being seen in some cases of COVID-19. In our lab, we study a set of receptors on the surface of cells that do various jobs in the immune system, but one of their most important jobs is actually to turn the immune response off after that response has successfully dealt with a problem, like an infection with a virus. And you may have heard that one of the Clinically, one of the important complications for patients who are in the midst of suffering with COVID-19 is that they can have an overreaction to the virus, and they can experience something called a cytokine storm. And they say that cytokine storm can cause a lot of problems for the patient, can actually make the disease worse. So our lab actually studies how the cytokine response of immune cells is regulated. And as I said, we work on a set of receptors whose job is to control that response, to sort of make it reasonable enough so that you can fight the infection, but not too severe that you have the problems of the cytokine storm. Any final thoughts from you all related to COVID-19? Professor Lemke? Um, I think it's important for everyone to know that scientists right now um, are chafing at this current situation, and we are really ready to hit the ground running, you know, to go full guns once we're able to get back into the lab, and we're really looking forward to it. Professor Keck? As we've been seeing the outbreaks of, of measles and, and other infections that really just, there's no reason for them to be occurring other than the fact that fewer people are maintaining normal vaccine regimens. And so therefore, we're losing the herd immunity that protects our population as a whole. I think in one outcome of this would be to really understand and appreciate the importance of vaccines, and, and not just from a personal perspective, but from a society perspective. The whole reason we're living in quarantine and in a shelter in place right now is, is not necessarily to protect us, it's to protect others in our society so that those that are more vulnerable will not get exposed as much and, and therefore may not die because they got exposed and got infected and had a severe outcome. Scientifically, it's been a very interesting time to see and really demonstrate to the public how quickly science can move forward. If you think about it, it's literally just a few months ago when this virus was first discovered, it was sequenced within a very short period of time. This, and already there have been dozens of research publications uh, published. I hope people will appreciate uh, how, how much knowledge has been gained in such a short period of time due to advances in technology and in data exchange, computational analyses, and, and medical knowledge. There's maximal exchange of information. And so I think that that should offer a lot of hope. So I think this has just been a very positive underlying aspect to, to the situation that we're in. Professor Hetzer? So very much in the spirit of John Ossoff, we believe that foundational basic research is really the only way to mitigate the impact of 
crisis such as COVID-19, but also to prevent it in the future and, and learn how to better deal with it when the next epidemic will hit us. And so we're well positioned to study the underlying principles of infectious disease. Thank you, everyone, for your insights. And listeners, Salk is in the process of tackling the SARS-CoV-2 virus in a number of ways. To learn more about our COVID-19 research, visit salk.edu slash coronavirus. Please stay well. Join us next time for more cutting-edge Salk science. At Salk, world-renowned scientists work together to explore big, bold ideas. From cancer to Alzheimer's, aging to climate change. Where Cures Begin is a production of the Salk Institute's Office of Communications. To learn more about the research discussed today, visit salk.edu slash podcast.